So the good news is uh, th this is where Aspera sort of plays the way that we've addressed this challenge of, of large data over long distances and difficult networks. It's with a uh, unique software protocol that we've developed called FASP. You can see it at the top of this slide, FASP. That stands for the Fast Adaptive Secure Protocol. And uh, very simply, it's, uh, it's built to address this challenge. Right, where you have a long, long, or a large amount of data, and you have difficult network conditions to send it over, where traditional protocols really fall down. And uh, I'm sure many of you have experienced this before if you've tried using traditional protocols. So I'm thinking of things like HTTP or FTP, or even things like SCP or RSync. Uh, there is this problem where they degrade over distance or they degrade when the underlying network conditions aren't perfect, right? In other words, if you're sending around the world and you have some round trip time increase, you know, your network latency in play, or if potentially there's also some packet loss, right? Even one or 2% of packet loss will, will really um, uh, introduce that, that very specific bottleneck and how fast you can go with traditional protocols. With the Aspera protocol, we have built it to be distance agnostic and to be very high performance regardless of those underlying network conditions. So even in those scenarios where you have a lot of latency, a lot of packet loss, Aspera will allow you to very efficiently use that bandwidth that is there. And of course, the net result to you is that, uh, that your files get uh, where they're going very quickly, even in those difficult conditions. Now we do build in a lot of other uh, nice features into the protocol. You can see some of them uh, broken out on the left-hand side here, but just at uh, sort of a, a high level, the specific things we want to deal with besides the speed are the, uh, the adaptability, the reliability, and the security. And uh, you know, this really mirrors a lot of uh, the things that, uh, that Hans uh, said was um, important, not only for, for Bluebe from a data transfer perspective, but also across the platform, right? And uh, I know these are all things that, uh, that all of us strive for in our file-based workflows. Specifically, Aspera has built in features like congestion avoidance to make sure that we are uh, playing fairly on the network in the case that these are going across shared networks. Uh, in other words, just because Aspera can go fast doesn't mean it should be 100% all of the time, right? If you have other traffic that needs to get through as well, uh, we will respect that other traffic. We want to make sure that uh, security is built in. So, uh, so we touched on this earlier, but data encryption in transit and at rest, these are both features that are built into the, uh, to the Aspera protocol. And of course, because these are going over um, a, a wide variety of network types and network conditions, reliability is also uh, of utmost importance, right? So we have built in uh, reliability into the Aspera protocol itself. So any kind of uh, corruption or lost packets in between the sender and receiver, all of that is detected automatically by Aspera and will retransmit just those bits that, uh, that we need to retransmit to make sure everything is whole again on the other side. In fact, there's even a, uh, a very simple configuration parameter if it's useful for you further down in your workflow that can provide a full file checksum automatically at the end of a file transfer. So as the transfer is going, of course, we're, we're doing these checksums automatically within the protocol, uh, but uh, just in case it's useful to have you, uh, for you to have in, in a log file, for example, or uh, available in a report, uh, we can say, okay, here is a list of files, and for each of them, here's the uh, MD5 or SHA-1 checksum. So from a performance perspective, of course, this is the, uh, this is really the, the compelling thing about Aspera is giving you this, uh, this very practical way of doing uh, large file transfers over longer distances. And uh, really, if you think about, uh, about what this means for you, it, it really takes distance out of the equation. As you can see here, you know, with, with legacy protocols like FTP, the larger your files get or the greater your distances get or you know, the, the more mixed your, your network conditions are, um, that, that will really put in that, uh, that bottleneck um, when you're trying to do these types of transfers. 
And a spare, of course, is, uh, is very reliable, very predictable is the other interesting thing as far as, you know, just based on what, uh, what size of data you're sending and what available bandwidth you have, you can calculate out exactly what those transfer times are going to look like regardless of the distance. The other interesting thing you'll notice on the, uh, on the performance numbers here are that uh, they are very uh, predictable as far as scaling in either direction, right? So as you increase the, uh, the amount of bandwidth you have available, for example, you can tell exactly what that's going to do to your transfer times. Uh, on the flip side, if you're also increasing the amount of uh, data that you're sending through, uh, you know exactly what that's going to do to your, your transfer times as well.